small businesses and you know i've gone on like that so yeah but yeah. all right so we're just loading here so within a couple seconds we'll be live there we go All right, we're all set here, guys, live on Facebook. So maybe we'll just give it a right. few seconds. And then, Joey, if you want to uh, kick things off with an introduction here. I would love to. So um, thanks, everybody who's, who's uh, on Facebook right now. Um, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, one of my oldest friends, uh, Jesse Wallen, who is a scout for the Detroit Red Wings. Jesse and I played midget AAA together in North Battleford, Saskatchewan. Uh, Jesse was a first round draft pick at Detroit, uh, world junior gold medal winner, two time Stanley Cup champion, one as a player, uh, one as a scout with St. Louis. Um, great to have him on here. Always fun to catch up with, with old friends and uh, just want to kind of pick his brain about, you know, the scouting process and, and today's player and, and the importance, what, what they look at. Just some information on, on some athletes out there that uh, are looking to make hockey as a career, I guess you could say. So welcome, Jesse. Thank you for coming on. Thanks a lot, Joy. Good to be here. So, um, you know, we do this every week. We have different topics. Sometimes they are pro sharp specific. Sometimes they're just think tanks about hockey. Um, so just, uh, you know, thanks for coming on. Like I said, we just want to hear what, what is, uh, what is the, in a normal year, let's talk about a normal year. What does the life of a scout really look like? Well, it's uh, in a normal year. Um, right now, it's obviously very. Uh, it's a lot of video. In a normal year, it's uh, you know one of the one of the older scouts when I came into this uh, said it best. He said it's it's not just a job; it's a lifestyle decision, and it really is a lifestyle. You go into the season, and basically from September through uh, you know certainly April um and in demand june you're you're you spend a lot of time on the road um early on we we kind of go through different phases for us on the amateur side uh really the kickoff to the season is in august when we have the ivan holinka tournament so we we get to watch it holinka it's really the first uh opportunity to see a lot of the kids in, in the age group it's all the top kids from each country so it gives you a real good roadmap um going into the year who the guys are you, you want to track and then um, as you move into September and, and teams get going, you're uh, you're really running around through what what we call the identification phase and trying to see all the players and see all the teams, see who's out there. And then as the season goes on, you're uh, you're dialing in and, and narrowing the player pool that you're looking at and really getting to know these kids inside and out. So um, it's very intense. It's it's not uh, you know I coached for eight years prior to scouting and, and so on a day to day basis. The coaching there's a lot more intensity being involved in the in the game and whatnot, um, but from scouting, it, it, it's a uh, it's a lot of travel, uh, it's a lot of time away from your family, um, and yet it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. It's it's you know we get paid to travel to travel around and watch hockey, and and uh, um, so it's it's a lot of fun and it's very rewarding. That's that sounds like a pretty good gig. I know you know going from from playing and being able to be inside that hockey culture is is something that you know, fills the void for a lot of us. How, how many years have you been scouting now? Uh, I did, let's see, my first draft was 13, 14. So this will be year, I think I'm going into year eight. It was six years with St. Louis and one with Detroit last year going into year eight. So in those years, like the, the players that you have watched and, and so some of the things that you've learned, ha, has some of the players surprised you that were in some of your drafts that have come along or is it is it, you know, are, are the scouts really dialed in and can project a lot? I'm sure a lot of it, both ways, you can see a player doing a lot and then there's some surprises that come in. So tell yeah, us a little bit about that. No question. There's, there's, um, <clears throat> there's, there's a lot of guys that, that become what you think they were going to be, but there's always surprises. There's guys that, that, uh, you know, you think they're going to turn out to be real good players that, that don't. And, and there's always guys that, you know, kind of slip through the cracks for different reasons. So um, by and large, I think you, you learn from the mistakes you make and, and you try with, with your experience to gain a bit of, um, you know, some insight as to, you know, when you have a bit of a track record, you're able to look back and, and figure out, okay, what's, what did we miss on this guy or why was he able to 
to, um, you know, develop into more than what we thought he would. And there's a variety of reasons for that. In some cases, it's just that a, a player was really physically mature. He might have been in a situation where he wasn't getting a lot of opportunity to play through his draft year. Um, and, and then even to things, uh, um, you know, just on the development side where, uh, you know, I, I won't say, say specific names, but there's a player who who has turned into a pretty good NHL player today that, uh, um, you know, they were able to figure out through player development that, that there were some issues with with his his uh, um, his knees and ankles. And, and, you know, through physiotherapy, we're able to, to fix those items and really change the way he skated, made us improve his skating to a, a much higher level. And that uh, allowed his overall development to take off. So there's a number of different factors, even, even where a player gets drafted, the type of system that they're in, the type of opportunity they get, those things can all come into play. So, um, but really from our perspective, you're just trying to find every edge you can and figure out what are, what are the elements that are allowing these guys to kind of crawl out of the later rounds or guys that slip through the cracks and figure out, you know, what we missed and how do we make sure we don't miss that next time. Awesome. So as, as, you, as the, the game has evolved, we noticed the highly skilled and the speed of the game. Like, it, obviously, ProSharp is a, a skating technology company. Um, when you're looking at a player, they obviously have to be able to skate very well um, to, to be able to catch your eye. Is there a cutoff point where you say, this guy's just not a good enough skater? You know, there's not, we can't invest enough to help him or anything like that. Even if he does have a great mind for the game or anything like that, how far will you take a player, you know, in a deficit, I guess, so to speak? Uh, well, I think the big key is not, not, to, not to write anyone off. Um, obviously, the, the skating is, is a huge component of it. Um, and it's something that we put a lot of a bonus on. We, you know, the game is so fast now today. You look back to when when you and I played, and, and it was it was a much different game. You, you know, from a defensive point of view, there was a lot of clutch and grab. It was hold up for your partner. It was, you know, anything you could do to impede a guy's progress. And you know, with the elimination of that, opening up the game, it's obviously changed the the dynamics of skating. You, you know, guys want to get there as, as fast as uh, as fast as possible. You're not able to hold up. Um, but it's also changed the way guys train. I mean, for, for you and I, it was all about getting stronger, getting bigger, adding bulk, um, having that strength. And now, uh, because that that element of the game has been eliminated, it's it's all about it's all about speed. And guys train for speed now. They're not as thick and heavy as as we tried to be. Um, they've got lots of core strength, but it's it's all about about speed and power. So. Uh, I think the, the, the rules have opened up the game, but also the way players train. Um, and it is, it's, it's so fast now. So, um, you know, and I think it's changed the way the game is played as well. It's, it's so, you know, you look at the European game, I know we got a lot of Swedes over here and you watch a lot of the Swedish league through the season and, and the European game is still um, a little more slowed down, a little more cerebral where we'll, they'll, they'll regroup and look to bring pucks back. The North American side, because it is so fast, because of the smaller ice surface, it's really still a lot more of a north-south game. It's getting the puck ahead. Obviously, you want to attack with speed, um, but when you're not on the attack and you don't have the puck, you want to keep that puck going ahead, get it behind the D, get on it as fast as possible, and really put pressure on in the, uh, in the offensive zone. So you have to have uh, fast players and, and guys that can skate. And even if you're, if you're not a, a fast skater, um, being able to play fast, being able to think quickly, um, so to your, to your question, it's a bit of a long-winded answer, but, um, you know, there are real good players in the league. There's no poor skaters in the league anymore, but there still are some really good players who maybe aren't great skaters, but they're able to play fast because they can think quickly. They can, um, they have good instincts and they're able to, to play a fast game because they can still think. So, um, to the, to answer your question, I guess, uh, it, skating is a huge component and, and after a period of time evaluating the rest of the elements in their game, um, you know, if, if they don't have what we feel could compensate for poor skating, then, then we'll go by them. But we, we don't rule them out simply because of poor skating, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we have a lot of viewers from Europe that are, that are going to be viewing this. And, and so is there, you know, take Sweden, for instance, the way they train, the way they develop, you know, their players from a young age, is there some countries that you just know what you're getting from that specific country or do you take that out the window and look them at, at an individual? 
Yeah, you, you, you know, it gives you a, an overall feel, no question. Um, but again, there's, there's always those guys that slip through the cracks and, and, you know, there may be certain countries that are, that are weaker on that development side, but if they've got one good player there that that's, you know, had, um, you know, had a different type of his own individualized development or is simply just, just that naturally talented, uh, you know, there's always good players that come out of every region. So you, you factor that in on, on, on the whole, but there's always the outliers and you, you want to make sure that you cover everything and find those guys. Not mentioning any names, is there anybody that you passed on that you they just, you know, was maybe a, a pick or two after yours and you said, wow, I never saw that at all. Like, you know, a big deficit. I know we talked a little bit before, but is there anybody that just like, I can't believe I missed that one? Um, there's, there's actually one story, again, I, I won't say the name, but we had a player um, uh, in my area here in, in the Western League at the time and... Um, he was, he was the next guy on our list. And we were, we were in St. Louis looking at, uh, you know, we, we hadn't won yet at that point, this is going back a few years and we had a real good team. We were trying to get over the hump and um, you know, we, we hadn't been able to get through that hump in the playoffs. So we were, we were looking to get faster. We were a team that, that uh, had a pretty good sized team, but we wanted to get faster. And, and uh, you know, we believed in, in having a big team to get through the, the playoffs. So, um, size and speed were two things we were really keen on in, in that draft. And uh, we had a player on our list that was actually the next guy on our list at the time. And we were about eight picks away. And so the, the other fella, the, uh, Jay Nemix, his name is a good friend of mine. And we were, we were uh, um, sitting at the table and thinking, geez, we're, we're going to get this guy. We're going to get this guy. And we were both a little bit nervous about, you know, we, we were happy with the player. We really liked him, his character, his intelligence and all the rest, but he was, he was on the small side and he wasn't a great skater. So these are two things we weren't, uh, weren't, uh, you know, looking for. <laughs> exactly. So we're, so we're, we're really getting nervous. Like we're, we're going to get him, we're going to get him. And, and uh, all of a sudden he ended up going a couple picks ahead of us. And I remember kind of looking at him and we were both wiping the sweat off our brow. We, we kind of missed, uh, missed on that one. That might be a good miss. And as it's turned out, he's turned into one heck of a player in the NHL today. So um, it's, it's funny when you, there's just so much change in these kids over the years. You, like I say, you, you rely on your experience as a player, your experience as a scout, and the further along you go on into scouting, I think the, the better you get it. Like to think the better you get anyway, just because you have that track record. But there's always guys that uh, that surprise you, both both good and bad. Um, but that's probably the one that sticks out the most because I I would have been really nervous making that pick, but it would have turned out pretty good in the end. <laughs> that's all right. You know, 50-50, You know, I, I see that too. I watch a lot of players, and there's especially at, at the you know minor hockey or you know amateur level players that I really like, and I just always wonder what they're going to pan out to be. I'm just glad I'm not on the hot seat like you at the draft table, having to put your name on a draft pick or anything <laughs> like that. There must be some pretty heated conversations at that draft table. You know, obviously there's a lot of you know there's a lot of ex players uh, sitting around that table that have a personalities that you know obviously think they know what they know is correct. Is there, is there a lot of intensity at that draft table, especially in the earlier rounds? Um, I would say the, not so much at the table, because once we get to the table, you really have, uh, you know, things are kind of ironed out and you have a good plan, you know what, what you're going to be doing. Uh, but there's a lot of intensity in the meetings and, and it's respectful intensity, but, but guys, you know, you spend all year, there's, you, there's a lot of investment in these players. As I mentioned earlier, when, when, you know, discussing just the process of scouting. You spend a lot of time on the road. And um, when you've got a guy in your area that you've watched for 12 or 13 or 14 times and you have a real good feel for what he is and uh, you're discussing him with your staff and, and um, guys get passionate about the players that they like. And that's what you want as a, as a, as a head guy or running a staff. Those, you know, you rely on, on your regional guys to really, you know, step up for those players. So um, you get varying opinions and, and, you know, I think that's one of the elements of a good staff is having varied opinions, having guys with different backgrounds. We have guys that, you know, had, you know, 20 year NHL careers and won Stanley Cups to guys like myself that had, uh, you know, a small um, short career in the NHL to guys that never played in the league and everybody brings a bit a different perspective. They bring different experiences to the table and we all see, um, you know, maybe some different things in, in the same player. So, 
I think when you put that all together and hash it out, you, you end up at the end, hopefully coming out with some really good decisions based on varied, uh, varied opinions. So um, the meetings are, are respectful, but there certainly can be some intensity and, and some passion in those discussions. And that's what you want. No, absolutely. You know, talking about obviously in that, in that group, the, the goal is to win a Stanley cup. And when you're building that, you know, if, if a player can do everything, he's a great skater, he has all the skill, he, 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 ha he checks all the boxes, but let's say there's something character wise that you, that you maybe not like, didn't hear. How deep do you guys go into looking at a person, at, at, a, at a player's character? You know, unfortunately the kids are drafted so young. It seems like they're not allowed to make any personal mistakes. Um, yeah. But how deep does, do you guys go into that? You know, basically, um, to, to when when you're making like you know a first round draft pick is is a lot of equity for for an organization and putting that putting um, the player's name on the back of of a jersey that you guys own is a big investment. So how deep do you guys go into the character? Well, it's huge. We we spend a lot of time. It's probably. Obviously, he's got to be able to play, you know, you're, you're evaluating as a player and that's the most important thing, but it's, it's not far behind, um, you know, what's, what's behind the curtain, what's, what's, what kind of engine does he have? Um, because ultimately, you get to that level, as you know, everybody's a good player, it's very competitive. And, you know, you, they, they have to have the drive, they have to have the discipline, they have to have the work ethic to, to become, to, you know, reach their potential and fight their way in there. So, um, we do very extensive research and, you know, talk to a lot of different sources and their background going back to, you know, obviously the coaches that they deal with now, but we, you know, into, into their minor hockey coaches, to teachers, to billets, to, you know, all of the above. So, and really it's all part of the process. I mean, you know, there, there may be certain kids that, um, you know, you just make the decision that, uh, you know, this, this player isn't, he doesn't fit what, what we're looking for, but there's also players that have, that have made mistakes and, and, you know, you ultimately come to a determination. Okay. We, we just want to know what we're, what we're working with here. And, and we want to have everything on the table and um, you, you come to a conclusion. Maybe there's some guys you can't work with, but maybe there's some guys you can, it was just simply maturity issues or, or, you know, we, we, we need to work with this guy in this area to improve. And, and maybe there's some huge upside in that. So, um, it's really just knowing the whole player, knowing the whole person and, and uh, coming in with all the info you can have so that you know what path you need to go down with him in terms of his development to help him become a player. Awesome. Awesome. I've got a, I've got John, a bit. John, here. Yeah, go for it, John. Uh, just a quick sort of two-parter. Um, given the current climate in 2020 and how crazy things have gotten with COVID, and how that's impacted all sports, but specifically hockey. Um, how much do you think it's affected from the player's standpoint in getting scouted? So like the opportunities that they would have been given pre-COVID as well as during COVID. And then how has it impacted the scouts job? So like, are you going to rinks? Are you still able to see games? Are you catching as much film as you were beforehand? Like, Give me a bit of a before and after. It doesn't have to be super detailed, but just kind of like how have things changed and how do you think it's impacted the players who are trying to make it to the next level? Well, I mean, it's, it's had huge impact on everyone. Um, you know, obviously in the hockey world, in the world in general, but um, from our standpoint, uh, you know, first of all, for the players, like I, I really feel for the players. I think they're the ones that, that, uh, that miss out the most. And um, my wife and I had this conversation the other day. I mean, for, for, for us at, at our age, at our, this point in our lives, I mean, one year to the next, there's, there's not a whole lot of change, but for, you know, going through that whole process myself from a 16 year old coming into the Western hockey league to being 17 and going into your draft year. And, and then to 18, you know, going through the draft, going through the prospects game, going to your first NHL camp, playing in the world juniors. There's, there's a lot of things that happen uh, for these players at that age and that stage of their careers. So to, to have that all kind of, taken out from under you, um, it would be very, very frustrating, very disappointing, and, and I'm sure uh, very emotional for a lot of them. And um, for the players in, in the CHL, particularly in the West and Ontario, to not be able to play, a lot of them haven't played a game since last March. So that's what, you, that's what your life is at that point. Uh, you know, I, I know I can speak for joy as well. I'm sure that we were, we were passionate about the game. You, that was all we wanted to do. And, and, uh, for me as well, that was, that was my escape. I mean, I, 
I lost my dad when I was 16 years old. And the one place that that couldn't touch me was on the ice. You got out on the ice every day and, and, you know, we're focused on playing a game and that was, that was your escape. So for a lot of these players, they've, they've, uh, they've had their passion taken away from them and, and uh, it's been, been real hard on them. Um, and obviously it, it eliminates the opportunity for them to, to continue their development, to, to be scouted, to play games and, and, uh, and all those things. So, um, the players that are playing are very fortunate. The, the players down in the U.S. and the USHL, uh, their league is going. Um, a lot of the players in, in Europe and certain leagues, I know the, the J20 league in Sweden has been shut down for a while now, but um, the players that are playing, it's, it's a huge advantage for them. Um, we, we're able to see them, and we've spent a lot of time uh, on video watching the players that we can watch, um, seeing the players live that we're able to see live. Um, but it certainly throws, uh, throws you off your rhythm in terms of what the normal protocol would be. And, and normally by this point in time, going into January, we've, uh, we've seen all the players, um, that we're interested in and we're going into our meetings and, and really getting a good book on these kids. So to be at this point of the season and this point of the calendar and not, uh, not even have seen some of the kids play it, uh, you definitely feel a little bit naked, but I feel feel really badly for the, for those players. Uh, um, you know, for us, it is what it is and it's unfortunate, but it's the players at the end of the day that are the ones that are, are really uh, in a tough spot. So you're saying, you're saying by January, you usually have your list. So John, I guess this January, you're not written off yet. So there's still a chance for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They scout in the outdoor rinks in Toronto or what? <laughs> yeah. Everybody's on the radar. Stuff, good yeah, stuff. We're still on the radar. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> well, Jess, I totally appreciate you coming on and talking about what you do and, and your your role in this great game of hockey. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we're hoping that things open up. Um, you know, because I think the excitement once everything does get back, you talked about players, you know, missing out on, on some big events in their life, but Hopefully this turns around soon and, and the energy around the hockey culture will just explode. And then we'll all get back to what we're normally able to do and get yeah. out of the house. So no kidding. Can't thank wait. you so much for coming on. John, do you have any more questions? No, that was awesome. Thanks for joining us. I think that went pretty well. I'm sure all of our viewers are going to really find this interesting quick little, uh, quick little interview from a NHL scout. So we just want to say thanks for joining us and um Stay safe and enjoy the holidays. My bad. Thanks a lot, guys. Pleasure to be here. And uh, Merry Christmas to you guys as well. Sounds good. Merry Christmas, Jess. One of these, maybe one of these days, you, we'll, we'll, we'll get out on the pond. You'll hear a, a D to D from Tedarenko to Wallen, maybe. And not to Wallen out. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, buddy. Sounds good, guys. All right, Jess. Take care. Thank you so much. Hey, you bet. See you guys.